my eyes unto the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. What is true? My name is Dennis Carroll, and it is uh, that time of coming together. And this is our transition lesson in This Is Us, Together in Christ, our cause, and then walking into the plan. I believe it was Gandhi that said, something to the effect, be the change you want to see in the world. I would maybe change a word today, since we are talking about us, and say, be the change that you want to see in the church. Or maybe I would just go to a far-reaching statement that might just capture it all, and that is, become the cause. And the reason I say become the cause, as we saw as, uh, in a previous lesson regarding God created light. Uh, Jesus came, he's the light of the world. We are to come to the light. And then we learn that we are to become lights in the world. So you see this process that we've been through has not been to come to the end, but actually to become or come to the beginning, and we become the cause. We've embraced it in love. But now we see, and we were in Colossians 3 in our last lesson, and this statement in Colossians 3 is summarized in, in a couple of things, and one of those is that you serve the Lord Jesus. Col Colossians 3 and verse 24, the very last statement made in that, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Jesus. Again, you know, when the Bible makes these kind of casual transitions into a, a, a three sentence, a, a little statement, we oftentimes read through them and don't stop long enough to see we serve the Lord Jesus. Well, we love Him because He first loved us. We went through that process together, but now when we say we serve Him, well, that is, we have a life application and a life lived in serving. We're serving the Lord uh, it actually uh, can be in the context of uh, being a bond servant. And he's even using that to say that, you know, bond servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart as unto the Lord. So you're in your job today and, and the things aren't going your way or maybe it's being unfair. But when we serve the Lord Jesus, we don't digress into the way the world is. That's how we are conformed to the world. But we're about being transformed by the renewing of our mind. And to be tr transformed is the way that we transition into the ability, understanding what it means. This is us together in Christ. This loving others as Christ loved us, and our cause becomes our bond, the bond of perfection. We read it, 
Colossians 3, 17. It's a familiar passage to all of us because when we say, whatever we do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. And whatever you do in word or deed, we, we use that, and I'll use a word coming up in, in our next quarter of study about the plan. We use a word like authority. And when you think about this word authority, and you, you talk about that terminology, it doesn't resonate love, does it? You know, however, at the very center of this is whatever we do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, is we are doing it in the name of the Lord, is not saying the name of the Lord every time we do something, but it's by His desire. It's the motivation that brought us to where we are, and it brings us to what we are doing. And for us to be together in Christ, and to be of the same mind, and of the same judgment, then we have to have that same source. Whatever we do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is reflective of the things that He has authorized or He has placed before us that we should embrace. And so it is, as we read Colossians 3.17, the birth of the plan. The birth of the plan. God's plan for your life. God's plan for my life. God's plan for our lives together. How's He going to bring us all together? Well, whatever we do, we do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we are thankful. Now, the birth of the plan obviously has to have something that is acted upon. And so this is your call to action in the same text. Colossians chapter 3, when he made that statement, verse 23, he followed up to the bondservant, whatever you do, do it heartily, heartily. What does it mean, heartily? That's your heart. That's from the source that you're using it. Do it heartily as to the Lord and not to them. Who's them? Well, those that aren't being right. Those that are being uh, unjust, uh, you know, serving up injustice. They're not being fair or, or whatever it may be. So, whatever we do, we do it heartily. Now, there's still the predication of truth in word or deed in the name of the Lord. But to emphasize now, we're going to say the birth of this attitude. Whatever you do, whatever you do. Now, I want to go to Luke, the sixth chapter. And as, as we begin looking at Luke 6, 31, it's going to be a familiar passage. It's the rule. And uh, when we embrace this rule, we're going to learn something about where we are. Because this is in that text about, you know, we're supposed to love each other in our last one, in our last lesson. But I say to you that who here love your enemies, do good to those that hate you, bless those that curse you, and pray for those that spitefully use you. It's a tall call. But here's what he teaches us. Just as you want men to do to you, do also to them likewise. So what you would have men to do to you, you do to them. Now, in James chapter 5, we ended with, if I'm in sin, then I need someone to help me redirect. If I see... Uh, where I can help another individual who is in sin. I'm admonished to redirect. That, that's an act of love. That's not an act of, of aggression. So we want to go to our study and see, do to others as you would have them do to you. The rule, this is the rule that's governing the plan. You see why we're laying this foundation? So many of us, and I could stand up in, in a few lessons and provide for you authority that comes from God. And by what authority do we do things? And we're going to see that in a very focused and practical way and from our individual lives to our collective activity as a church. But the rule, 
governing the plan is this, having that right objective. Always, we want this thing. Now, the details to execute the plan. It's gonna surprise you as we go through this lesson because we are getting down to the small. We're going to be at the small. Uh, so oftentimes, we think of things that we're going to do religiously as some large, big, great thing. Mark 9, 41. For whoever gives a cup of cold water to drink in my name, what? See, there it is again. Whatever we do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now we have a cup of water to drink in his name because I belong to Christ, because you belong to Christ. Surely I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. What is it? It's a cup of cold water. So we studied in our Proverbs class a few weeks ago, whatever you have in your hand to do. Well, sometimes people say, well, I don't have any abilities. I don't have any things. I don't have anything to give. No, you, you do. You do. You give love. You give uh, compliments. You give encouragement. You give uh, that shoulder to cry on, the shoulder to lean on. You seek for understanding. You seek to be understanding, and you, you listen. These are the things that we can give. And so as we look for the grand picture of things that we can do, the smallest things mean a lot. I have a story I'm gonna share with you that, that is uh, very personal regarding this cup of cold water. I had a father-in-law who was a, a very independent fella and he was his own, own guy. He lived by his own rules, and, and he was a, a very, very animated and, and just uh, engaging. He lived his life wide open, I'll say that. And uh, he lost his wife, my mother-in-law, tr great tragedy, showed the effect of what loss can do. But I went as he became ill, and he was in his last day. Uh, and I went to his room, and his my wife and her sister uh, walked down the hall and I sat with him and, and he said a couple of things to me. One, he said, take care of my babies. I'm the youngest one in the family, so uh, tall call. But then that cup of cold water, because he gave me something. He, he gave me something that he wanted for me We can give, we can give. But then he turned and in, in, in the hospital, at the VA, there's a little plastic cup and you know, the straw that has the little bendable top on it so that you can lay down and bend it to get water if you can't lean up. And he just, he said, could you get me some water? And I did, and it was within a few, moments that he departed this life. And I walked away with the cup and the straw and thought of all of the things that he needed and that I could have given in that moment in time, it was a cup of cold water. We can do more than we think and how that we do that is because we position ourselves in a place that's not locked inside or quarantined inside the four walls of our house or the four walls of our office, but is in interacting with people in life every day. And it's all about the little things, the simple things that we do that begin to affect the change, not only in us, but in the lives of other people. And it's how that those bonds, if there's ever been a moment that I was close to my father-in-law, it was that one. It was my last one. Unvarnished. Real. Well, we talked about a lot of stuff. We had a lot of fun. 
but we had that moment. Something else about us, about our church, about the way that we function. And I, I have a great concern because this is now, we've become a part of the, the, the details that are essential to the plan. I just want to say, I'm talking a lot to the camera today. There's so much that, that we do. <clears throat> and we have visitors, we have people that come into our congregations or to a place or in our circle of life. And we look for those that can provide something for us, something that they can give to us. And then we also want to be with the gifted and talented. We want to be with those that, you know, can support us rather than maybe us supporting them. In Matthew, the 25th chapter, we have it wrong if that's the way that we do it. You know, I'm, I'm fearful that the churches are creating a club mentality. You see it in the development of family life centers, multi-million dollar facilities and things that are going in that have absolutely nothing to do with the feeding of the soul. And all of those funds, all of those things being consumed in that. And the church I do the work of as an evangelist at the Good Shepherd Retirement Center, they're very little in the way of money and small in the way of people. But we take those funds and we send them to generally a, an evangelist in a third world country that is preaching the gospel in difficult places. And I realize in the big budget, you can throw that money there too while you're spending $5 million on your basketball court. That becomes an imposition too, doesn't it? Because then all those other people that don't really have the ability to pay to be there. Matthew 25, Jesus is saying about the Son of Man coming with his angels sitting on the throne of glory, judging nations. And when we come before that throne, then he will say, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me and I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and, and you came to me. And the righteous are going to say this. Well, Lord, when did we see you hungry or feed you or thirsty or give you a drink or see you a stranger and, and took you in or naked and clothed you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And then he said, and as much as you did it to the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. When we begin to identify the plan, if it fails to capture the least of these, my brethren, we've missed. James chapter 2 tells us about that tragedy of partiality. Faith with those kinds of deeds, it's dead. Because that's not the works of God. It's not God working in us. That's not whatever we do. In his name is the plan. At the heart of the plan is the expression of mercy. It's the message. It's the determination. And it is what we were going to accomplish if we can comprehend and embrace the way that he loves, the depth, the depth of his love. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. A couple of verses there. Remember when Jesus gathered the tax collector, he came by his office, and we know the, the disposition that, uh, or the, 
the reputation that tax collectors had in the community in that century. And nevertheless, as he passed there, a man named Matthew at the tax collector, and he said, follow me. And he rose and followed him. And now it happened that as Jesus sat at the table in his house, they behold many tax collectors, there's that group, and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And here's what the religious elite had to say. Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? And when Jesus heard that, he said this. Those who are well have no need of a physician but those who are sick. And then go and learn what this means. I'm going to read it to you, but Jesus said it this way. Go and learn what this means. Life application of the plan. Go and learn what this means, that I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. That changes everything. It's not a club for those that are some religious elite. It's the recovery center for those who have sinned. And we are there for the purpose of loving, helping, and this incredible optimism that we possess that we wish to instill in others. And yes, it's a challenge, isn't it? It's a challenge because we want to go through the external dis display. Oh, look at my sacrifice. When he says, I desire mercy. And what is that? That's the withholding of the prejudicial judgment or the judgment of the external problem that an individual has and looks to the core of their need and reaches for that. God did that for us. He withheld the judgment that was due and expressed to us His grace that enabled us to live, live our lives. And so may we learn evermore the essential element in God's plan is us being of the same mind, having the same love, looking out not only for our own interests, but for the best interest of others. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Let the mind of Christ, that sacrificial disposition that enabled, demonstrated, even to the point of the death on the cross, that as he was lifted up, he would draw all people to himself. And 1 John 4, 12, no man has seen God at any time, but when we love one another, his love is perfected in us, which tells me in the context of that, that while others, we don't see God with our eye in that sense, but when we see when others see the behavior, the love that we have for each other and the desire that we have for this unity that we're going to be pressing, pressing, pressing toward, others will see God through us. They'll see Christ in us. That's what is true. And friends, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through Him. And if we can assist you in any way in that journey, in that struggle, in whatever we can do, we invite you. Contact me, my number, 519-7778 at 501 area code, 519-7778. You can contact me by email. Whatever we can do to assist as we examine and yearn and seek God's Word, let us humble ourselves. Let us meet at the Word of God. We pray it's a blessing to you. If you are in or around the Little Rock area, uh, Little Rock Church of Christ, we meet at the Breckenridge Village 
uh, shopping center. Our congregation is there. We have a, a Bible study center that's just fantastic. It's just, oh, it's just been an incredible blessing uh, what has happened there. But we invite you to come join us and be a part of our worship uh, and learn a little bit more about the church there and any questions that you may have. Uh, and come in, embrace the gospel, obey it, be a part of the cause, and then let's move forward with the plan. The other thing that we make known to you at this time is our Proverbs Live. It's on YouTube, and you can see past programs. There's a, also a Facebook page, uh, Proverbs Live. Uh, we invite you to go there. There's information provided to you. There's a book, that a, a study guide that I wrote, uh, Insight, the ability to make the right decision in life. And we hope and pray that you'll take the book of Proverbs. If, if the lesson guide will be of help to you, use it. And if you need one, let me know. We'll make a copy available to you. But Proverbs Live, it's a great, great opportunity for your young people to reach for the Word of God. Thank you. Have a blessed day. I lift my eyes unto the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. Praise you in this storm.